Hi, I'm David Puller, a librarian at Lone Star College, North Harris Library. Today for Tabletop Thursday, I'm going to give you a few tips to help you more efficiently assemble a jigsaw puzzle. Like a lot of people in quarantine, I've been working on a jigsaw puzzle. I'm currently working on a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle that shows an image from the anime movie, Your Name. Uh, I ordered it at the beginning of lockdown. It took several weeks for it to uh, be shipped to my home from Japan, uh, but I ordered it under the assumption that I'd still be working from home when it finally arrived. Sadly, I was correct. Tip number one, dump all the pieces from the box into a colander and shake. This will help get rid of the dust that may have been added to the box while it was still in the factory. Tip number two, get a couple pieces of foam board. This is really helpful for making your workspace flexible. During quarantine, my crafting workspace has been a piece of plywood on two sawhorses in my living room. If I have 10 minutes to spare, I can quickly make a bit of progress on whatever project I'm working on. Whatever your workspace is, you can get a piece of foam board from a crafting store. Make sure that it is bigger than the size of your completed puzzle. You may wish to get two pieces if you're going to frame your puzzle, but we'll get into framing later. Most importantly, foam board makes your workspace movable, and a solid color can sharpen the contrast between your puzzle pieces and the workspace. Tip number three, sort your puzzle pieces into major categories. Edge pieces are the most obvious. You can also separate whole colors. In my example, I can create piles for white, red, pink, purple, and black, as these are the major colors of my puzzle. You can also create piles for distinct features of your image. In my example, the faces, the red ribbon in the girl's hair, the boy's green tie, and the written text are obvious when separating pieces. Areas where there is a sharp contrast between colors, such as the dividing line between the girl's skirt and the background, are easy to spot on individual puzzle pieces. Separate all of these. Now place these categories into plastic containers or labeled zipper baggies. Tip number four. Feeling stuck at some point? Turn your puzzle upside down. Look at the image from a different point of view. This can trigger your pattern recognition skills because it helps your mind think of the items in your puzzle as images rather than real objects. Tip number five. If you're feeling stuck, sort through your puzzle pieces again. You may have misidentified pieces and placed them in the wrong categories. Those are my five tips. Now let's talk a little about framing. Some people like to simply put away a puzzle once they're done. That's not me. If I have labored through a puzzle, I'm going to frame it and put it on my wall. There are frames made specifically for jigsaw puzzles. One type has an open front. If you want to use it and not have your puzzle fall apart immediately, you'll need to glue it together. There are crafting glues made specifically for this task. There are also sticky sheets that you can apply to the back of your completed jigsaw puzzle that will hold it firmly in place. These solutions require destroying your jigsaw puzzle. Once you glue a puzzle, you can never disassemble and reassemble it again. So when I found an extremely rare anime jigsaw puzzle a few years ago, I purchased a type of jigsaw puzzle frame that has a hard plastic backing. This holds the jigsaw puzzle in place without glue, wedged in between the solid plastic front and back. If you're going to frame your jigsaw puzzle, buy the frame after you have completed it. The final size may be different from what the box says. Have fun with your puzzles. If you make one, be sure to tell us about it. We'd love to see and share your work.